Natasha Martinengo. Storming down the pit lane. Weekdays from 12 to 2 p.m. Central African time. Is your radio. So today is like a Wednesday, but for me it's like a Friday because I've got to go off to uh, Durban tomorrow for Top Gear. And every Thursday, of course, we have our uh, feature which goes like this. Who the f*** is? Well, there we go. Who the is? And one of the first people I actually got hold of when we wanted to uh, start this feature was Little Miss 79, otherwise known as Janine Mitchell. And she's in studio with us now, uh, this afternoon. And the amazing thing is I met her years ago in a nightclub. How bizarre was that? And um, she came up to me and she said, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, um, I uh, race motorbikes and stuff like that. And I was, okay, that's pretty cool. And then uh, I've been following her progress since then. Janine, great to have you here. Thank you, Sasha. Oh, hold on. I got the wrong microphone here. <laughs> Wait, try one of those. Working now. No, it's not. That microphone's not working. <laughs> Hold on. There we go. Now I've got it. All right. Well, there we go. Now I'm on. So thank you, Sasha. It's awesome being here today with you guys. It's great to be here. And I mean, listen, we're going to chop and change. We're going to go like from what's happening now to back uh, when you started and who you are and all of that kind of stuff. But I got to tell you off, uh, off the uh, bat, I was watching the uh, SWAT Corps race Ooh. the other night. Um, it, unfortunately, they show it very, very late at night, but I don't yeah. sleep much, so that's okay. So <laughs> I was watching. You had a brilliant, brilliant weekend. Well oh, done. Thank you. I did. Oh, my word. It was one of the best w- race weekends I've had in a very long time, so I'm very happy. <laughs> and I mean, it, it's because you've got to have balls to do what you're doing. Well, I've got the boobs. See, I don't have the balls. So I've got the little boobies that go for the, the you know, guns of steel. There we go. So <laughs> it, it, it keeps you well balanced. <laughs> yes, you see, that's how it works. I knew there was a reason. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we oh we got uh, we got the film camera yeah, guy who's coming in here as well, in now. which is terrific. Okay, let's start at the beginning. Um, where are you from? I'm a Benoni girl. So Benoni. I'm, yeah, I'm from the East Rand. Nothing <laughs> wrong. Born and bred Benoni girl. Well, I was born in Cape Town. I lived there for about six months of my life, so I don't remember it at all. Yeah, I know. And well, then, you know, it doesn't I, really count. I wouldn't, I wouldn't brag about that either. Oh, come no, on. No, I'm only joking. Yeah, <laughs> they've got a little hill and those kind of things, but there we go. So, born in Cape Town, lived in Joburg your whole life. Yeah, lived in Benoni my whole life. Where did life, you yeah. go to school? I went to um, primary school. I went to Tom Newby School, and then I went to Benoni High for about two years, which is high school. And then I actually moved to a little technical school called Hörschkleins Moor. So I had a bit of Afrikaans in me. <laughs> okay, there we go. And, and so, so you went to a technical school. I did. Why? Well, um, I was a bit of a adrenaline drunkie since yeah. I can remember. And I enjoyed everything to do with practical. So I decided to go more of the technical routes. And I had technical drawing matric as well as motor mechanics. <laughs> oh really? I love cars, so I wanted to learn how to use, how to like work on them. So you learned how to how to like sort of do basic mechanics. Oh, I promise you, I actually had to the one day oh, we had a big test. I mean, the one I think we had to do cam timing was the one, and it was yeah. all manual, not you know. And then um, I think the other day, well, when I was there, we had to do um, change the piston rings. So in front of the whole class, and I remember it was technically an all boys school because mm-hmm. I was the only girl in that class, and it was hilarious. They all loved it. <laughs> this girl putting on piston rings. But you could do it. I did. And I bet you it was the best. It was. Can you show us your hands? Let's see your hands. Uh, no, but face them the other oh, way. God, you see, if you look at my hands, I've actually got the calluses coming on the inside. I've got the titanium. Pinky yes. from racing, and then yeah, but other than that, I'm trying to be Lady Luck. No, 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 I think you're doing a superb <laughs> job. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about uh, why you've got titanium in your little pinky because uh, you know, that's this is a risky kind of game that you've decided to embark on. Just a little, <laughs> just a little, yeah. I mean, so you you at technical school, yes, I was, and you're learning how to tinker with cars, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, what what drove you? to two wheels well the first time i ever went to go watch racing i went with a friend of mine who owned a bike and my mother who was such a sweetheart let me go and ride with him to go watch a race on the back on the back i went pillion yeah I was what's like, wrong with your mother <laughs> oh well, what's yeah wrong, what's wrong with the mothers of today <laughs> oh well if it wasn't for her i must admit so it's actually good that she was like that because she's now groomed me into being the woman that i am today and, um, yeah, I went to go watch racing, and then there was another woman called Vilmarie Janssen van Rensburg. Mm-hmm. And watching her, she won that race. 
and um, I was actually too nervous to go up to and speak to her. So my friend, um, who was I was with, he basically went to her and said, listen, she wants to race. How do I get going and where do I start? And then um, from there, we got in contact with Alan, who I'm just going to mention a little hello there. Hello, Alan. <laughs> hello. And uh, yeah, so from that little family, they got me into racing and I started on the Derby development class. So it's all because of those people. That um, have got me to where I am today, pretty much. Okay, now what is the Derby development class? Well, <clears throat> it's not around anymore, excuse me. Okay. And um, it's it's similar to the NFF's 100 that they've got now on the regional calendar. So basically, you pay a certain amount to start in the beginning of the year, and um, you get a bike, you get to the track, and they everything's sorted. So it's and it's 100cc? Uh, well, that one was, your mine was a 75cc, but okay. the one that they've got now is the like NFS. 100 the no freaking speed. <laughs> the, well, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, the NFS or something, I guess. <laughs> okay, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. And um, basically, you know, it was a, it's a great way for people to start that don't have a biking background. Because my family, I mean, I was the, the little one who loved motive, sports, and speed, and everything to do with that. So for them, they had no idea where to start. So it was great you know, great um, grounding for, mm. for any family to get involved in that kind of environment. And then every year, I just got bigger and bigger and bigger. So, and then I landed up on 600s. <laughs> yeah, which is uh, relatively big and pretty damn powerful as well. Yeah. So, uh, in-studio guest uh, this uh, afternoon is a remarkably talented Janine Mitchell. She's on Facebook. She's on Twitter, which is uh, Little Miss 79. Yep, Little Miss underscore 79. Little Miss underscore 79. If you have any questions, send them through to me on uh, Twitter at uh, F1 Sasha, otherwise at uh, Balls Radio. Uh, she's going to be with us for quite a while in <laughs> studio. So um, ask her anything. There's lots that we want to get through. Uh, we found out that she started on no freaking speed little bikes and derbies <laughs> and those kind of things, uh, derbies. And, uh, of course, she now races in the 600s, which is like super bike, proper fast stuff. And uh, we'll find out. Uh, how she got there, why she's still there, and where she wants to go to. So stay with us right here on Original Gears. Sin. It is. Who the f is? Ah, her name is Janine Mitchell, and she races 600. Is it called super bikes or super stocks? Or it's called super sports. Super sports. So, yeah. <laughs> super sports. Um, and well, besides being very, very pretty. She's Aww. also incredibly talented on a motorcycle. Okay, so we go, we're going through a little bit of a timeline. So you started on your little derbies, and then you got bigger and bigger and bigger. Motors, motorsport is not a cheap sport. No, okay. it definitely isn't. All right. <laughs> so the thing is, you now you sit there, and so how did you sit and decide, okay, well, where did you go from 100s or 75s? Did you go up to 100s or 150s, 250s? Well, basically, um, I actually came from horse riding. So the comparison with regards to horse riding at that time and racing motorbikes was actually cheaper to race motorbikes. Mm. But um, so I started on, on the, the Derby and the 50cc. Then um, the following year, I went to 125s, the Aprilia 125. And yeah. at that stage, um, <laughs> the year I decided to go to 125, everyone in the class decides to go to a GP 125. So as you know, MotoGP 125s are a lot quicker than the, the standard ones. So there's me. For the whole season, I try to just uh, not get lapped. <laughs> I'm not even joking. But you got but you got great experience. Yes, no, I did. And you are on an Aprilia. I know. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes. I loved it. Stunning, stunning uh, little machine. <laughs> they that's, are. That's for sure. They really were. And then... Um, the following year, I went up to 400 cc, and um, actually, sorry, I forgot. In the 125, when I was racing 125, I was still doing the Derby class, and that was my first, um, basically, season of, of achieving something in motorsport. I was the first girl to win races in the Derby um, through that season, as well as I finished third in in uh, the championship. So I was quite proud of that one. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah so that was quite awesome. And that then, is um, terrific. Yeah. So I started a little, little tradition because uh, the following year, another girl also, she finished third in the championship. So it was quite nice. And then, uh, yeah, the following year, I went up to 400s. Had a really terrible year. And uh, Why? 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 <laughs> um, it just was one of those seasons. The you know, power? Yeah. Well, I basically, for example, the one, the one year I went to East London for the All Bike Day, 
we get there, we change the jets and everything, and then my bike decides to break. So we spent 11 hours on the road driving there, and um, the bike decided it just didn't want to work. But that's the joy of motor racing, Oh, yeah. Isn't it? You know, it always happens like that. <laughs> mm, well, uh, let's have a look here. Dean says, saw Janine at East London. Go, Janine. Awesome. Oh, yay. Very, very cool. Uh, Paul Thank said, you, Paul says, um, smile more to the camera. <laughs> and then he goes, sure, she'll kick my ass on a bike. Oh, <laughs> my word. Ah, but oh. she can ride in front of me anytime. Gee, oh, I wonder words, why. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> hey, her boyfriend's here. Be careful. And he's quite a big guy. Yeah. Apparently, you like Zambuck. I do. I don't know. Oh says, my yeah. gosh, is that from Gareth? Gareth says, Little oh Miss 79 loves Zambuck. Gareth just really wanted to be mentioned, I must admit, oh, because okay. I'll tell you the story. It's hilarious, and I hate the fact that he mentioned that. Yes. Um, the one day at the racing, <laughs> you know, you go into such a zone. I think I've just gone blood red, but anyway, you go into such a zone, and. Um, I wasn't concentrating, and, and what I do before I race is I go and I put lip ice on. Mm -hmm. And this day, I decided that lip ice wasn't going to go on my lips. I was going to try and eat it by accident. <laughs> <laughs> so he was the only person that saw that, and it was I didn't even eat, I didn't eat it. Luckily, I realized what I was doing. No, you did. But um, oh my word, it was hilarious, and he laughed, and he's never let me live that down. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. So there's. So yeah, uh, that's the story. <laughs> okay, so that's that's Gareth. Now stop it now, Gareth. Leave us alone. Yes. Uh, ca <laughs> The, oh, this is this is a bit of a sexist one from Eric. He says, "Can girls pop a wheelie?" Well, now that is very um, yeah. How can I put it? We can, but some of us have just flipped on the start, so we've just you know taking it one day at a time to learn how to wheelie. Okay, but rather do the racing. Yeah, I'm I'm sticking to trying not flipping while I like get off the start, rather than um, you know learning how to really. <laughs> okay. And uh, but that is a goal for this year, though. I want to try. All right. Now, before we get into uh, where you are racing now, let's let's go back. Um, I I saw some pictures I think on your Facebook page, and we're going back. I think it's five years. You had a big big accident. Yeah, in okay. 2007. Yeah. What were you What were you riding? Um, it was my first season on the 600. I okay. got a Yamaha R6, which, um, which is a stunning, stunning oh, bike. Especially that one. The people that it was worked by Alan's family and, um, oh, sorry, worked on. And um, oh, I just loved it. And at that stage, uh, the racing wasn't so strict. So you're allowed to modify the engine. You're allowed to do a whole bunch. And it was very quick. And uh, coming at SWAT Corps, which is now become my favorite track, um, Around turn three, which is a bit of a long sweep. Very quick. Uh, yeah, it's a, a, a crash that I think it was between 180 to 190 k's an hour. And I crashed into a little tire wall. Um, if you watch the racing now, you'll see that there's, when the bike's on, there's a yellow balloon that mm. they put there now. But it wasn't there when I crashed. <laughs> and um, my bike pretty much followed and hit me at the same time. So we hit the wall together, bounced off, and I was lying there. And um, yeah, I hadn't broken a bone until that situation and now i'm broken 12 <laughs> yeah and we just laugh about that there we go yeah, How, yeah. how's your it life happens. been well i've broken 12 bones but man <laughs> i'm just loving life at the yeah. moment when when you had that big accident did did you sit maybe when you were in hospital and and fortunately you've recovered superbly yeah luckily but i mean we, we, did you sit there and think why am i doing this i did i must admit lying there you know i had Jeez, I can't remember how many drops I had on me and everything, and, and I was in ICU and everything, so it was it was a bit of a big crash. Um, I, I thought to myself, I was like, I'll just be a pit girl. But then um, <laughs> I watched, actually, it's weird how these things happen, because while I was lying there, my doctor decided he wanted to come and explain to me my titanium fingers and how I'm going to have to go for occupational therapy and everything. And um, a uh, the racing came on um, at SWAT Corps with Sheridan Marais doing a 101. And I actually stopped the doctor. I'm like, hold on. And I wanted to watch the, the rest of him riding. And from that moment, I just, you know, something inside of me was said, I can't give up. You know, it's just, that's what I want to do. And that's what I need to do. 
So it was hard coming back, but I did definitely, you know, second guess myself on whether or not I can handle the pain and all of that. Mm, mm. And it was, ICU was a a bit of a tough experience. Um, I didn't handle morphine. I think I got morphine and pethidine. Pethidine's very good. It is, but not after five days. (laughs) Well, I don't know. I had it a few days and I was loving life when I was (laughs) on pethidine. Are you lucky? No, my body didn't like it very much. Oh, okay. So, yeah. But um, it it was... Definitely one of those experiences that I needed to have because it's made me a stronger rider today. Ah, okay. This is an interesting question. comes from uh, Jack Jack uh, Firth. Hey, Jack. Why didn't Daddy let her ride a bike to school? Oh, well, um, my parents actually don't like motorbikes on the road, um, mm. which, you know, you understand, especially living in South Africa, we don't have, you know, I don't know, I'm not going to be very uh political you know, right now that's fine you, you can do and say as you please well you know it's just it's we I'm don't gonna, think bike enough yeah very mm. thank you yeah we don't and um it is a bit more dangerous and also on the track you can do so much more on a track than you can on the road without you know you can go as quick as you want you can go and have a bit of a dice with someone else so that's why they preferred me just to rather stay on the track <laughs> yeah and i'd probably do stupid things on the road <laughs> No, then you'll pop your wheelies. Yeah, exactly. There we go. Next to the cars and be like, hey. This one comes from uh, Van Coutier. He says, big respect to the lady for her career choice. It rocks to see a girl give some horns in a man's world. Thank you very much. Very I nice tried. one. That's very, very cool as well. Okay. Um, listen, we've got lots to talk about because I want to talk about more about family. Okay. Uh, um, then I want to talk, of course, about your racing that you're doing now, who uh, who's supporting you, et cetera, et cetera. And then also... Um, Boyfriends, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's a it's a man's world, but it's not so uh, not so easy when all of a sudden your girlfriend is just a hell of a lot quicker and a little bit more boy than you are. Yeah. All cool. right. So we're gonna do we're gonna spend a lot of time with Janine. That's just gone twelve thirty C A T. It's Gears Balls a Visual Radio. Who the f- is Janine Mitchell? Stick around. Who's in studio? Who is a tremendously talented? Uh, a uh, rider who rides in the 600 Superstars uh, series in South Africa. We'll get to that in a short while. In the last bit that you were listening to, she, we were talking a, a little bit about uh, when she was in hospital back in 2007 and told the doctor to wait because she was watching the screen and she saw Sheridan uh, do a 101. Now, just to give you, you know, maybe you don't understand what that means. A 101 was the time that he set going around Swart Corps. And I remember... Uh, talking to you um, sort of by accident um, because I was meant to phone some girl in (laughs) on a yacht in Monaco and I phoned you just about on the grid ready to go racing at Swartkops which is the weekend that you you really I think you you rode uh, impeccably and you were setting your sights and doing a 104 or you're just done in the practice day I think you'd done a 104 yeah or I think yeah practice day I was doing 104s yeah I yeah. was yeah and then uh, and then you managed to beat that time as well in the race um yeah first race uh, I basically uh, well I can say this now yeah. but I'm now officially the fastest woman at Swat Corps Raceway so yay I'm very happy about that there we go <laughs> the fastest lady on two wheels at Swat Corps <laughs> she's got big balls yeah one of those yeah something like that <laughs> Okay, that is amazing. So, That's yeah, a great achievement. Thank you. I'm very happy. It's taken a lot of hard work, but I'm there now. And um, basically, yeah, I did a 103.9. And uh, the leaders that day were doing a 102.8, I think it was. So, I mean, that's um, for second race when I did the, the 103. So, yeah. I'm almost there. Uh, it's, it's very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, the next national, I'll be there with top five. <laughs> that is amazing. I think that's, uh, well, there we go. There are the goals. All right, yeah. before we get on to your racing now and you're racing for uh, Kawasaki. Yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> Let's, I want to go back to your family. So your mother says, okay, you can go with uh, your friend or whatever on the back of his motorbike. You get this little bit of a bug. Uh, they say, listen, we don't want you on, on the roads, which is fine, fair enough, or whatever. Um, how did your parents react to your accident in 2007, the big one? Um, I, my dad to this day hasn't really told me how he's reacted, but okay. I'm sure it got to him. I mean, especially everyone on the sideline can see how nervous my dad is still, especially at, at SWAT Corps. Um, because luckily my mother wasn't there that day. It was a Friday practice and um, I basically crashed where everyone can see. Mm. So my dad literally saw me flying in the air, 
hit this wall, bounce from this wall, my bike hit me kind of thing, and I'm not moving. And I was lying there for about, I don't know, say five minutes, and, and I wasn't moving at all. So my dad's heart must have stopped. Sure. And then, I mean, I was in Unitas Hospital in Pretoria, and we come from Manoni, and they, they used to come through every single day, and they would drive through after work and come and see me and see how I'm doing. So I think that whole environment, and especially coming home, um, having to look after me you know when you're injured people don't realize that you can't do anything (laughs) i couldn't bath i couldn't uh, wash my hair i couldn't do anything my mom so they looked after me and and um as parents should yeah and i'm I'm really grateful for that yeah it was the one day my mom washed my hair and i was lying down couldn't move for about half an hour until the neck brace dried (laughs) so it was yeah it was it was they're very supportive and um i think they stressed um seeing the crash but at the end of the day like my dad always says he'll support me in anything i want to do that's so, amazing yeah i'm very very fortunate of that and my dad's a, an athlete as well so he comes from the rugby background so okay. for him you know for him he understands and he ran comrades about 12 times so he understand what it takes to to go for something and not to give up that's so, incredible that's yeah. that's brilliant to hear a couple of tweets that have come in uh, for you uh yo sash tell little miss 79 i say hi it's nico that does the stunt riding oh wait hey nico how there are we you? go cool one oh, yeah i met him the other day <laughs> all right and mike in china who, he's one of our favorite uh listeners he, he's in china oh wow that's cool hey, and mike. do you have a sister in hong kong um no but i have a friend who might be going there and she's very very pretty i don't think that's gonna help (laughs) he says she looks sounds mannerisms so much like my friend monique here in hong kong oh wow (laughs) not a sister mike but you know what it could be a very good pickup line good (laughs) good luck with that good luck with that okay um oh good question here from cape town grant will you only ever date a petrol head no, actually, I don't. <laughs> ah, okay. Let's now let's talk a little bit about uh, a little bit about your personal life. You know, we won't delve too much into it. But I mean, um, I suppose being surrounded, being at racetracks all of the time, you're surrounded by the same kind of individuals, same kind of uh, desires, wants, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, number one, before have they have your peers and i'm talking like your male counterparts in in racing have they treated you the same or do they sit there and get their neck up a little bit to sit there and go there's no chick that's going to beat me oh very much so (laughs) they do not like it they have a lot of respect which is which is nice they do respect the fact that we are up there with them but they still don't like it at the end of the day. and um, Especially when you beat them. Yes. And um, I've had a few incidents with the one guy. He's overseas now, so I need What's to get his there. Name? Bjorn Esmond. Um, shame, okay. I'm sorry, Bjorn. <laughs> he Did says he give that, you a nudge? No, he's actually said if I beat him, he's going to stop racing. So that's my little goal. Well, that's it. That's a, and he's racing overseas. <laughs> yeah, so he's there and he's doing very well, though. He really he's, okay. he's got a lot of talent, so he's doing well. And then, um, you know, Clinton Seller, we basically... I remember him from when I was still on 50 cc's and yeah. he signed me a poster saying, I'll race you in the future one day. And at that stage, we were probably like, what? Never. And now and I'm, racing I'll be racing together and I'm almost at his time as well. Well, close. You, so it's becoming entertaining. You know, I, listen, I love the, the super bikes and the superstars. I got to tell you, I think the superstars is a little bit more competitive in my opinion because yeah. you've got a lot of the guys from super bikes have come back down to the superstars. Yeah, you've got the little brat pack as we called. Yeah, you got and Lance. Yeah, we've got lines got they must be really frustrated because you like taller them than them as well oh, shame, yeah. <laughs> poor little lance i know especially in your high shoes that you're wearing today i've got it you see that's what's so beautiful about being a woman you can be as hardcore as you want in the male world and then when you leave there you can be such a lady and feminine and enjoy shopping in the rest so nothing wrong with <laughs> yeah, that yeah i enjoy that <laughs> <laughs> okay so um okay so we got this bjorn guy out of the way there who, who and, and the guys who get a little frustrated because they're racing against a girl yeah. um, and you know tough luck if you, you, you're you not up to the grade and uh, that's how it goes you know, whether you're a girl or a boy yeah that's the thing you know we mentally physically they might be a little bit stronger but we just train a bit harder and uh, we just as great as what they can do on a bike you know the, at the end of the day it's up to you and your bike of what you can achieve not your gender <laughs> so what happens if, if like you're in a nightclub uh, or out somewhere and somebody comes up to you oh hi how you doing what's your name hi it's Janine yeah what do you do well, <laughs> I race motorbikes oh I 
actually How does that so happen? Ner- you know what? Funny enough, I really actually get nervous when guys do ask me that because... What do you do? I race motorbikes. Yeah, exactly. And All like, right, whatever. step back. I know. It's actually <laughs> funny how... Um, my best friends, my friends love saying that whenever I go out, they, they promote me more than myself. Everyone's like, you see my friend? She races motorbikes. She's, she's so cool. Uh, <laughs> and it's like, oh my word. <laughs> it's just my sport. There's nothing, you know, fancy. But I mean, does it, has it intimidated some, some people that you've met over the years? Um, the environment definitely is a bit intimidating having a female, you know, and, and mm. it happens a lot where a, a successful female, um, you know, dominating in a male world, some, some men can't handle it because sure. you know they're supposed to be the man in the relationship kind of thing and um some of them are just a bit stronger than others <laughs> so do you take your your boyfriend on your bike at all no not no. on my race bike oh, no. unfortunately that's just that's just does, a, does he a one, ride uh he used to oh okay <laughs> but not anymore no i think he's leaving that to me <laughs> okay because you beat him and now he doesn't want now he, oh, two wheels like, give me a, give me four wheels now yeah he's more of the four wheels kind <laughs> of guy so we'll, we'll stick to that one <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome um uh, cape town grant there we go thanks you're just saying well very cool first time listener that is really really cool oh, uh, another one here uh, Little Miss 79, you definitely a champ. We'll always look up to you, hopefully to get mm. some training with you. And that comes from Taylor Farina. Yes. Oh, hey, Taylor. No, definitely. Okay. Um, actually, that is in the pipeline. I'm going to be starting my own little riding academy. Um, Terrific. Yeah, it's going to be basically one-on-one training. I'm still busy with, you know, Can the you teach me? Anytime. Because I'm useless on two wheels. Oh, yeah. But see, you'll give me a run with money for, on four wheels. So yeah, we'll, but no, no, we'll no. have to do this, you know, like hand in hand. I'll teach you how to race and you can teach me how to ride a car. Okay. I mean, ride a car. That's it. Drive, Drive a car. Drive a car. <laughs> um, I'll, should I tell you my little story of two wheels? You're more than welcome to. I bought a, um, a Ducati 998. Oh, really? Yeah. And I got it. And then... Um, uh, they delivered it to my house and then as I was driving out I turned right and then I turned left and then when I tried to turn right again I got it completely wrong oh, and landed up and ripped all the ligaments oh, okay no. but let's be honest it wasn't a Ducati 998 it was a BMW X1 scooter oh my god it's the most embarrassing story oh, in the history goodness. of embarrassing stories no ways I'm sure there's more I'm sure there's although, others <laughs> although just tell everybody I was doing just over 300 on a 998 okay, oh, yeah, well, okay. I'll, I'll make sure that's that's between Any you and time. I. so I'm not very talented on two wheels so you know what I'll be the first person to sign up to ca- brilliant because I've got a scooter at home but I'm too scared to drive it because I'm so useless okay I'll make sure I get a scooter as well we can go and have a bit of a dice on the scooter no, and no, just we'll teach me how it. to do it so that when I turn, I don't lean the other way and fall over like an idiot. <laughs> That's all I want to do. Okay, well, well, we'll try. We'll start on the basics. Okay. okay. All right. So, okay. So, tell us a little <laughs> bit more about the school you're going to do. Well, um, it will be one-on-one training. Yes. Um, basically, uh, I will go there with my bike, with the camera, and I'll spend the whole day just with you. So, um, you know, if anyone wants to contact me about that, they're more than welcome to just uh, drop me a message on Facebook uh, or my Twitter, you know, for that yeah. matter. Just drop me a message and um i'll go from there so any track you want to go to um any time like even during the week or on a weekend whenever you're available i'll be um willing to help you out that sounds brilliant i'm in okay let's talk about you now at the moment 600 cc superstars uh kawasaki yeah do um, they supply you the bike I am, so you're fully sponsored? I'm fully, well, I'm very fortunate to be sponsored by Kawasaki as well as Smartform and Insurance. They are my two main sponsors. And All then right. I've got Sound, um, Sound Activation Media or, yes. and um, then a whole bunch of other little sponsors that help me out throughout the season. And I'm really, really grateful to, to have them on board. They, they're helping me a lot. And they have basically given me the opportunity to be a fully sponsored rider. And all my focus is racing and helping develop the sports as well as um, training. Um, that's what I do. You know, that's my life. And um, I now understand how it is to be a, a full-on athlete. A proper, full-on, yeah. 100% athlete. Yeah. Um, it's, Tell it's us about work. training. What do you do in tra- I mean, how often do you train? Do you do weights? Do you do running? Do you? Uh, what do you do? Um, what does I, it take to be a superstar uh, rider? Well, for me, I basically train between or call it four hours a day 
and um, it's a combination of weights, CrossFit, boxing, which I love. I'm full on into boxing. Yeah, and but <laughs> does she move you? Her boyfriend's sitting over here just dropping his head going, oh my word. Yeah, he's actually seen me take a bit of a hook at the bag the one day. And yeah, it was very interesting. He's very scared. <laughs> so I really put the effort in. I mean, and also sleeping and um, I don't, uh, well, as we met in a club, I don't do that as often as I used to. <laughs> you know, it, it takes a toll. You've got to, you make the decision in your life whether or not you want to be a champion or, you know, a professional athlete or to go and still go jaw and, you know, do that kind of thing. So It's admirable. Yeah. I think yeah. it's it's brilliant. Thank you. And where from now? Uh, well, I'm basically, um, my goal for this season is to at least finish one race top five in the nationals. That is a very big goal for me. And um, hopefully get the chance to race overseas next year. Um, you know, Stunning. Yeah, I really want to try and, and uh, go and take on, uh, uh, like as, as Sheridan has now, being a South African and Ronan yeah. and all of them that are overseas at the moment, um, to have a woman there also making South Africa proud because we do develop some fantastic um, motorsport athletes in this country so it's it's i want to try <laughs> put my well, name out there <laughs> yeah well there we go kawasaki there we go you know you've got yeah. uh, they're going oh rands euro yeah. rands euro whoa whoa <laughs> yeah. makes a little bit of a difference it is it isn't easy i must admit it, it's going to take a lot to to be able to get there first of all um but hopefully i'll get the backing and, and i've got great people supporting me and we'll see hopefully some more people will come on board and i can get there <laughs> well, listen, we, we wish you, uh, I think, all of the Gears listeners, and of course, uh, personally for myself, wish you all of the best thank for the you. rest of 2012. Yay, thank you And very much. hope you achieve that top five. I'm sure it's coming. I think the way you wrote it, Swart Corps, I think gi gives you such a boost of confidence as well. Thank you, yeah. Um, I know you're racing again this, this weekend at Swart Corps. Yeah, I, I've pretty much, um, you know, call it being, I've been invited to race this weekend at Thunderbikes. It's not really, you know, I don't, I'm not going to take any points or anything because mm. I'm a national rider and. And um, they Thunderbark uh, riders, so they coming in basically as track day riders. So it just um, that gives them the opportunity to to race against us for the times that we're doing, just to try and see you know where they fit in. Yeah. And um, you know just to get the chance to race again, I can't wait for that because we we off for now for a little bit of a off season. So yeah, frustrating. <laughs> when, when's your next uh, national? Oh my word, it's only in August. In August, and where's that going to be? Uh, the first one will be at Pekisa Raceway at the okay. beginning of August. Yeah, great circuit for bikes. Oh, it's it's brilliant. It's it was fast. What was developed for bikes. Yeah. Oh, between Pekisa and Swakov, they they're pretty much my favorite tracks. Stunning. <laughs> yeah. Janine, it's been such a pleasure to have you here on Thank Gears, you. and wish you all of the best. Keep us in, informed of what you're doing, how everything goes. Oh, Def, I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you. It's really, really been a pleasure. So, who the f is? Janine Mitchell, follow her on Facebook. You can follow her on Twitter, Little Miss Seventy Nine, um, and get involved if you want to learn how to ride a bike. She will also teach you how to ride a bike. Janine, it's been Thank a pleasure. You. Thank you so much to everyone, and I uh, hope everyone has an awesome day. Thank you. Gears on Bulls.co.za with Sasha Martinengo. He's kept himself out of trouble. Weekdays from twelve to two p.m. Central African time.